say that one more time. A spoken word. In other words, God is speaking a word to you. One word. Spoken a word. One definition that I found was it means a spoken word from a living voice. Let me say that again. Rhema means a spoken word from a living voice. So God wants to speak to you through a living voice, whether it's through His living voice or through somebody else, or even through the Word of God, because we even saw there that the Word of God is living and active, and it's breathing, right? So the spoken Word can come from the Word of God, it can from, come from a person, it can come from God Himself speaking to your spirit. That's what Rhema means. Rhema means a spoken Word. What God wants to do is speak a Word into our lives today. He wants to speak that Word. See, sometimes all it takes is just one word. Actually, that's what the next one is that we're going to look at. The second word we're going to look at is logos. logos. That's how most people pronounce it, logos. It's actually supposed to be pronounced logos. L-O-G-O-S. That's right. And logos means a word. Just a word. That's it. A word. When I think about that, I think about Jesus. It says that he that he he healed them with a word. He just said one word. Amen. That's it. All he had to say was heal. And it came. A word. Amen. See, that's all you might need this morning is just one word saying, guess what? Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. Or Amen. Just have peace. Yes. See, all, all it might take is just one word from God Amen. to change what you're going through right now. Maybe it might even take two words. You might go home, pick up the phone, and they say, you got the job. Amen. All you need is a word from God. Amen. Amen. Just one word from God. That it, it, when you look at this word "word" in the Greek, it means a divine utterance. Back in old time Pentecost, they used to use a lot of the words like "oracle," just a word from God, just a, a divine utterance. Divine utterance. That's what we need this morning. Is a divine utterance. A divine one word from God in our lives to change. Yes, Jesus. What's going on? This word is found, this word logos is found 330 times in the New Testament. If you're taking notes, write that down. It is found 330 times in the New Testament. And when it's found in the New Testament 330 times, it has to do with one individual giving communication to another. Let me say that again. It has to do with somebody giving communication, a discourse, having just conversation with an individual. 330 times, that's a lot. Where God is just individually speaking into somebody's life a word. I think to myself, if I can find that 330 times in the New Testament, how many words has God got for somebody in this place this morning? Just one word to change somebody's life this morning. I want you, we're going to go back to the Old Testament and we're going to look at a few scriptures on how God spoke to people. How when God spoke to people, He changed their lives, He changed their outcome, He changed their mindset. I mean, I know that sometimes it just might be your mindset that needs change. Yes, yeah. Go ahead and turn to 1 Kings chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 22 and 24. And before we get down into verse 22 and 24, I just want to 
give a little bit of a summary of what's going on here. Right now, there's sort of like a civil war, a little bit of fighting and bickering going on with the people. It's uh, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 22 and 20 through 24 we're going to look at. And there's a little bit of bickering going on, there's a little bit of fighting going on. And God is ready to speak to the people to tell them to cut out what they're doing. How many know that God just might be wanting to tell you to cut out what you're doing? Maybe that's the reason why you can't hear from God is because there's some stuff you need to quit doing. Look what happens here, verse 22. It says, But this word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God, said to Rehoboam, Son of Saul, king of Judah, to all Judah and Benjamin and to the rest of the people. This is what the Lord says. Do not go up to fight against your brothers or Israelites. The, the Israelites. Go home, every one of you, for this is my, my doing. So they obeyed the word of the Lord and went home again as the Lord had ordered them. Now if you look in verse 22, it says, But this word of God came to how I many know that when God speaks a word, it's going to come to you? That's right, that's right. He's going to speak that word, it's going to come to you. Now notice, he's telling them here, he spoke the word and told them, cut out what you're doing. Amen. Quit the fighting, quit the bickering, quit the arguing. Sometimes God might speak something into you and tell you to stop. Maybe that's the reason why you're not getting to hear from God or getting the answer that God has for you because he's telling you to cut out what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, know that if you keep on going around the mountain, you don't want to hear what God's got to say. You're just going to keep going around the mountain. Amen. Amen. If you really, 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 really don't want to stop, and you tell God, hey, I want to stop, God, but if you keep on doing it, I'm going to speak a word to you and tell you, you need to cut it out. Yes, Lord. Yes. You need to stop it. You need to stop hanging out with those folks. Yes, Lord. You need to stop seeing that girl. Amen. Mm -hmm. You need to stop doing this. You need to stop doing that. Amen? Amen. Yes. Now notice here, it says he gave him a word, and look at verse 24, it says, This is what the Lord says, do not go and fight against them anymore. And he's giving him a word, stop this, stop doing this. Stop doing this. So not only one word did he say, he, he's given him a second command now, don't do this, stop it. Now notice when it gets down to verse 24, it says, So they obeyed the word of the Lord and went home, as the Lord had ordered them, or as commanded them. Yes. Notice that well, God is going to give you a word today, there has to be some kind of action on your part to receive and to accept that. Yes. Come on now. I said, if God's going to speak a word into your life today, you have to be receptive of it. You have to receive it. You have to accept it and say, all right, Lord, but this is what i got to do to get right and get going, to have that word come past in my life, and that's what I'm going to do. Come on, yeah. Yeah. You just can't sit there and say, all right, Lord, Lord, from God, what's going to happen? No, you got to take that word. you got to run with it, my friend. It says that they obeyed the word. If God's going to speak something to you this morning, you have to obey what He's going to tell you to do. Don't say, well, you just don't understand why God's not doing nothing. Amen. <laughs> Did you do what He asked of you? Did you do what He said? Go ahead and take a look at the next one we're going to look at. First Chronicles. So we see that we got to obey God's word when He speaks to us. Amen. Take a look at 1 Chronicles, chapter 17, verse 1 through 5. Actually, it's going to be 1 through 15. 1 Chronicles, chapter 17, verse 1 through 15. 1 Chronicles 17, verse 1 through 15. After David was settled in his place, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under a tent. Nathan replied to David, Whatever you have in mind to do, for God it is with you. But the night, that night the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord says. You are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. I have not dwelled in a house from the day I brought you up from Israel. 
to Egypt to this day. I have moved from one tent site to another, from one dwelling place to another. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their leaders, who I have command shepherd my people, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pastures from attending the flock and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you go. How many know that God's going to be with you wherever you go? Amen. I have cut off you from your enemies before you. Now I will make your name like the names of the greatest men on earth, and I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they have come home to their, their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress you anymore as they did as in the beginning and have done ever since the time I've appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also subdue all your enemies. I mean, know that your enemies won't have nothing on you. Amen. Amen. Yes, Thank you, Lord. If God's speaking a word to you, your enemies aren't going to harm you. Right? Yes. Yes. I declare to you that the Lord will build a house for you and when the, your days are over and you're, you will go to be with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, one of your own sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for me and will establish his throne forever. I will be his father and he will be my son, and I will never take my love away from him as I took away from your, your predecessor. He was talking about Saul. I will send him over my house and my kingdom forever. His throne will be established forever. Nathan's report to David, all, the, all these words, to this entire revelation to him. Now, I love how verse 15 says, Nathan reported to David all the words that, uh, in this entire revelation. Now, if you notice from verse 1 through, through 15, it says that originally... Nathan told him, Pastor, you do whatever you want. Right. That seems right. If you think it seems right, you can do it. Okay. And then he came back to him probably just maybe a couple hours later and said, Look now, I got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what God's telling you to do. Okay. It says the word of the Lord came to Nathan right. to give that word to David. Okay. And he told him how he was going to be with him, Pastor. Told him what you what you got. See, sometimes, see, Nathan. David had a plan in his heart right. to do something. Right. He had a plan in his heart to do it, but God's plan wasn't that plan. That's right. And sometimes what we do is, is we say, i got a plan and I'm going to do it. Right. And it's never part of God's plan. But if we think God tells we, us, we need to hear the word of God and what He said. Now sometimes what we do is we like to fight against that, what God spoke to us. God says, do this, and we say, well, now, I know this is what you said, God, but I will still want to do my own thing. <laughs> well, guess what happens when you do your own thing? You're messed up. <laughs> so we've got to make sure that if God spoke a word to us, we don't keep going and going in the same direction of what we thought that we like to do. I've been there, done that. I've been in the place where I told God, this is what I want. And this is how I'm going to get it. And God said, no. And I fought God. I fought Him on it. Amen? But it says in verse 15, after all this was done, it says, Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. How many know that God wants to reveal Himself to you? He wants to speak His word. He wants revelation to come into your heart today. Amen? I remember one time God had spoke to me so clearly one day. I was, I was sitting at Ponderosa having lunch one day. I was sitting there, I was just looking out the window, not thinking anything, not saying anything, I wasn't even praying, just looking out the window. How I many know that God will get your attention when you're least expecting it? Yes, Lord. Amen? And I was looking there out the window, and God spoke to me and said, I'm going to bring a woman to you today. And she's going to speak to you. She's going to prophesy to you about how your ministry is going to grow one day. And she's going to speak all these things of how your ministry is going to grow. And I got all excited, Pastor Martin. Then one, one hour went by, no woman ever came. <laughs> Two hours went by, no woman ever came by. Three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. Finally, I'm on the seventh, eighth hour thinking to myself, did I hear God right? Was that that state, you know, coming up on me? Well, did I really hear God? 
And this was during the time my wife and I we were dating, so she was still living with her parents. And I went over, and I, I, Laura just got off work, and I went over and I said, God spoke this word to me. He said he's going to bring a woman to me, and she's going to prophesy to me about how the ministry is going to grow. I wasn't even in the ministry yet. And I remember sitting there telling Laura, I don't know if it's going to be you. I don't know if it's going to be uh, your mother. You're the only two Christian women I'm going to be around today. I don't know who's going to speak those words to me. And this was probably about 5 o'clock. And then later on, my wife, Laura, and I, we ended up going to a park. We jumped in her car. We went to this park. It was called Petersburg Trails. And we're walking on this trail. And as we were walking on the trail, it was about 7 o'clock that night. We came to this pavilion. And they had, had music playing. They were playing Days of Love. How many remember that song? Days of Love. That's right. <laughs> and we walked up and we asked. There was a whole bunch of women standing around. <laughs> and two guys, they were husbands of these women. And we had come across the Women's of Globe Fellowship. <laughs> now I know if God's going to speak to you through a woman, it's going to be through the Women of the Globe Fellowship. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's an all-woman Pentecostal fellowship. <laughs> and we were standing, we were talking to this guy. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I'm talking, this is a long pavilion. This woman from out of nowhere comes running up to me and she comes over and she sticks her hand out of my head and she says, God is going to make your ministry grow all day. You don't know what God's going to do with your life. How the things are going to prosper. How you're going to go over and you're going to preach the gospel. And I just went right out underneath the spirit. I just, I just went right out. See, one word from God can change your life. I want to tell you, my friends, that's been almost 17 years. Pastor, I still hold on to all that. Because what that woman spoke over my life is coming to pass now. I see it coming to pass. Did it happen right away? No. No, it didn't. But it's, it's, it, I'm already walking it out now, Nicole. Everything that he spoke, I'm walking out now. I think sometimes we get a word from God, we think, oh, it's got to happen right now. <laughs> well, if God gave you the word, it must be happening now. No, sometimes it might not be now, but it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Do you know why that word in my life didn't come to pass right away? It wasn't time. Well, it, it could have been not the time it was a little bit off. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you who messed it up. <laughs> it was me. Yes, Lord. I messed it up. When I met my wife, I told her I was called to be an evangelist. Do you know what I ended up doing? Two months after I told her that? I knew what I was supposed to do. I knew God spoke to my heart. I was called to be an evangelist. But I had a church organization come and say, Hey, we're going to throw some money at you. We're going to have you start a church. We're going to give you a salary. I said, Okay. And I planted a church out of the will of God. And then from there, I went out to Ohio, pastored another church out of the will of God. Then I went to Indiana County in Pennsylvania, pastored another church out of the will of God. See, God allowed me to pastor out of His permissive will, but it wasn't His will for my life. And the last church I pastored, I said, God, I'm done. Done running. Because this is what I told God on the last church I pastored. I'm not going to be happy until you put me in a full-time pastor. I'm not going to be happy. I prayed that way for two years. I'm not going to be happy until you do it. I'm not going to be happy. I'm not going to be happy. Until that last church I got in, I said, okay, God, I'm done. I don't want pastor no more. I'm done. No more. No more, please. And I remember my wife and I, we had nowhere to go. We were living in a church parsonage. had nowhere to go. I said, God, I'm done. This is what you want me to do. I'm doing it. I got no job. I got no nothing. We moved in with my in-laws for six months. I built a schedule to travel for a whole year. And God started allowing those things to come to pass. And guess what had to happen? I had to get out of the way. I had to stop telling God what I wanted. 
If we're going to hear a word from God, we've got to get out of the way and stop hearing what we want to hear. Amen? Yes, I want to read you one more scripture, and then we're going to close up. Take a look at Jeremiah chapter, chapter 1. Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 1. And let's just, uh, there's a lot that I want to cover here, but let's just start at verse 4, and I'm just going to jump down quickly so we can finish up quickly. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. It says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I, before you were born, I knew you. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. He's speaking a word to him, telling me, he, he knew him before he was even born. Do you know that God knew you before you were even born? And he's speaking this into his life. Just go ahead and shoot on down to verse 12. Actually, you know what? Look at verse 11. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see a branch and an almond tree, I replied. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen correctly. I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Now notice what he says there in verse 12. He says, the Lord spoke to me and said, what, what do you see? And he says, I spoke, and he says, he spoke correctly, and he says, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Let's go ahead and read it in the NIV, uh, the New King James Version. The New King James Version says that the Lord spoke to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. However you want to look at it, whatever translation you're reading from, fulfill, ready to fulfill that word or, or perform that word. When God speaks a word, Nicole, there's action that's going to take place. There's going to be fulfillment take place, Pastor Mark, when God speaks that word. Something's going to be fulfilled. It's going to be performed. Action is going to take place when God speaks a word into your life. Yes. And see, when, when something like that happens, there should be a transformation on the inside of us. That we're no longer the same after, after that word has been spoken into our hearts. Spoken into our lives. That action has taken place. It's been performed. It's been, it's been fulfilled in our lives. That's how one word can change everything in your life today. It can change everything. Action takes place when God speaks His word to you. Amen.